Everybody welcome. Do you need okay. a minute, Mom? Do you need a minute? No, no, no. Okay. I'm ready. I'm ready. We are ready too. Okay. And I'm going to begin with the painting. And you know what I miss? The iPad. I miss bringing my glasses. Okay, I'll get them and I will get the iPad. They're in the red case. Johanna and Rona send lots of Hi. love. I knew I wasn't going to forget anything, so I forgot my glasses. Kenny, they're in a red case. Okay, sure. I've been so careful to be wonderful and have everything. I failed. Until he comes back, I just want to tell you that it's the painting this time is the view from 17th Street and 3rd Avenue. And it's very special. And it's on the wall, Kenny said. So you can read it, but I want to talk about it also. I promised myself I would arrange things so everything is in order. And it might be. Thank you. Greg just walked in too. Yay. Okay. Let me begin with this. Let me begin with what it says on my board, on my wall, whatever we call it, about the view from 17th to 3rd, even, to 3rd Avenue. And I want to tell you about the painting because because it's special. I had never done a scene like that before. You know, the scene is an overlook over parts of New York City. It was Don's apartment. Don is one of the Adler kids who commissioned a painting. And this is what he wrote. Make the painting look as if the world is round and the horizon endless. Over here is Ellis Island. That's where my grandfather left the ship, which brought him to America. And I am standing here with Beth Israel Hospital on my left, where he later practiced as a doctor. And I thought, I'm not going to say anything. I think what he said about the painting is better than anything I could say. And I want to tell you, how I got to know that family. I have to tell you quite a bit about it. Today I'll be speaking more about people than I will about buildings. I met Elaine Adler on Orchard Street. And I would say that Orchard Street really is my beginning of having the courage to paint a city because my original, my original thought had been that I would just keep on drawing so that nobody would notice me. But when you sit on a sidewalk, you are very much noticed. And everybody would say, put me in. Could you put me into the picture? Never at the beginning, when everything was just funny looking shapes, but when a nose began to appear and a hand began to appear, it was, would you put me in? Mm -hmm. But put me in next to my store. No, I can't do that. You have to wait until I'm done with this one. When will it be done? I really am not sure. But you'll see me here. And then Elaine and I began a friendship, which was so special. There are few friendships in my life that can ever have time to go so deep. And first of all, it was an unusual family. My husband, Eric, and Elaine's husband, Mike, pretty much died around the same time. And we comforted each other throughout. And I think that tied us together even deeper. Mike, before he passed away, Mike was a very athletic. And one day when he was swimming, he found he couldn't swim anymore. 
and the things in his memory were disappearing and they didn't know what it was and they traveled they went from doctor to doctor to find out and it was something that very few doctors knew about it was called aphasia and it was very often diagnosed as being crazy and when he became, began to be able to eat with knife and fork again and to begin to remember the things which had disappeared they decided there were so many people who couldn't afford to do the research that they had done and they built the Adler Aphasia Center which is now in different parts of the world and Eric and I went down to see it it was at that time it was in Maybrook which was near to where we lived we lived in Hackensack at that time and New Jersey and since I did not know how to use a computer at that time and very few people did going into that aphasia center was a miracle they had experts teaching them people how to use them experts to teach cooking experts to teach all the things that normal life disappeared from them with aphasia and and maybe that's why I'm beginning with this painting to tell you about the people and I'm still in touch with them and will be for the rest of as long as I live because I'm also in touch with some of their children I just spoke to Marie a few days ago to ask for permission to mention these things because I never mentioned the owners of a painting but I'm choking up because I'm thinking of Elaine who is now being taken care of by a woman named Yvonne and she translates for Elaine and me because it's difficult for Elaine and he connects to Facebook so if uh, explains so I just want to say out of the Orchard Street paintings the Adler family and mine appeared now since I'm going to speak about people this time I have been getting miracle after miracle in my life and one of them is Eileen Cutler and Paula Lakshan who are on every program coaching me it's where Kenny says can you be here can you hear her can you not and she's always been there but this time when sometimes they cannot be there I told them that I was going to write about them because so much happened to me through when Kenny decided many years ago when he was a youngster that he was going to go to college in New Paltz and out of it came Eileen, Paula and some very very special friends of his and I'm going to tell you I wrote to Eileen and I said Kenny and I were planning next Monday Facebook program that was last week when I wrote that and it will include the threads that led from Kenny going to New Paltz and our wonderful friendship with you both and now Ed and how amazingly life shapes itself like it does and this is what she wrote from Eileen Cutler next Monday that is so nice, Hetty. It was our beloved Michael who connected us to Kenny. Michael who we lost way too soon. Michael said to me one day, I have a friend who is looking for a place to live. His name is Kenny. 
So my then girlfriend Gail and I met Kenny for breakfast in town, New Falls, and over breakfast we said, sure, let's live together. Ha, it was that simple. We knew immediately we were family. And in our New Falls days, the tribe included Eddie, who was the sweetest guy who moved through the world with his camera and still does. By the way, he's photographing me working and you'll see those photos eventually. Um, he captured all of these amazing portraits which are now historical. He is driven to capture and preserve these images like no one else. That he became a, phot a photographer of stars and famous people was no surprise. And now to have him connected to you, it is such a gift for him, for you and for us. Life has a way of weaving people together in a monumental fashion that we are so grateful for. We find family or family finds us. Isn't that wonderful? Love you so. Have a good day. Big hugs forever, Eileen. <laughs> And here is one of my favorite photos of Michael for you. So let me give that to Kenny to show you. Because I never met Michael. And then Eileen, who's a brilliant photographer on her own, visited our family, and that was our family then. Kenny will explain who is who. So, to the left is Jesse, and then is Joni, Eddie, and me. I'm not sure where the rest of the crew is, and I think this is Willie. Yes, that's Willie, Joni's dog. Yes. Okay, now, by the way, this is why Eileen is a wonderful photographer. Okay, because, <clears throat> okay, let me go further. About Ed, I don't have a picture of his here. You will get it next week, but he was the one who found Kent for us from Sweden. And this is the picture where Eileen and Paula showed the picture that he found that I was painting of the Plaza Hotel and sent the photo. So this is the next one. I told you it's going to be all about people. No, no, I'm just holding it. Oh. This was our time in the city together, looking at your buildings. Yes. Yes. Which was so heartbreaking for me because Kenny had the idea of our doing with Paula and with Eileen to go to the city, to Orchard Street, and to look at all the buildings that I painted and what they look like now. We expected to find glass and luxury because New York City has that. It was dead and empty. And going home, I felt so sad until I realized it was fate. They sent me there so that I could so I could save Orchard Street in the paintings. And before I go to the next thing, I want to show you the Aphasia Center. Because the Aphasia Center from the Adlers is part of my life because it introduced me to learning how to help people with disabilities. Because if you lose your mind in a way that makes you look crazy but it's really you're not 
it's aphasia and I would like all of you to learn whatever you can so that you don't misdiagnose people and this is so that you can oops By the way, Kent from Sweden, who was discovered by Ed, no, Eileen sent the photograph because she recognized me. And no, she didn't. I don't remember the story. Eileen, you're going to have to tell me again. But she showed it to Ed, and Ed knew immediately how to reach Kent. And Kent is going to be coming, I believe, in September. And you'll meet him on, this, on the program, okay? Now, the large part of today, I need to speak about a book that Kenny is going to hold up. Oops. Mm -hmm. Okay, three books I've been speaking about that had such a powerful impact on my life. The first one was, and that one I discovered to my, found through Facebook relative, Jose, Jose Espinosa Belgray, who made a quote from this wonderful, wonderful astrophysics person. And I, Joni and I tried to figure out what book we should order from him. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah, the last name is Tyson, but the first two names. Neil deGrasse. Neil deGrasse. Okay. What I've learned to do is to learn anything I can but not to go so deep that I stop understanding because I don't have a background. So what I picked from Tyson is that I am a miracle. Billions of years ago, I can't count. There were only gases. And then they hardened and the first atom was formed. And you and I, and the birds, and cats, and dogs came from that atom. It's enough for me to know from the book that all of us came from the same source. And one of the things I want to talk about because of this book which has become my other Bible is that there is a new exodus of people coming right now because of the war in Ukraine and it's not a war it's a, it's a, a Hiroshima it's a bombing of people of people who are going to be going through the world homeless asking for help and when Hitler came in 1938 into the miracle city of Vienna in Austria I became one of them but I didn't know it because my father was powerful. He went to the dangerous streets from 
places to places trying to get visas for us and you could you could let it run okay Greg thank you Greg is answering the phone and through sheer luck and the Republic of Panama who sent us visas I am alive and well and my father my mother my brother and I survived I would like to continue doing volunteer work I can do it best throughout but I need to begin again as I did in the Fortune Society because when the pandemic hit I couldn't go there and I had loved working with people in prison who have just been out there's a different kind of volunteer work needed now and I would like any of you who can come up with things that you can do to let me know and let me announce it because it is a destruction of a world and I believe that together with the pandemic makes me realize how awesome we are because we can help I would like any thoughts from any of you to speak about here. If possible, write it on my iPad. Um, actually, you could write, if anybody has any thoughts they, that you want to share, you could share them right here in the comments, and we would appreciate that, and we will read them out. So if you have any reflections. Yeah. And Please. Mom, should I read you things people have written? Yes. So, um, um, Johanna and Rona send lots of love. Marilu Bilgre de Rodriguez is watching. Mark Schumann is watching. Hi, Mark. Um, and Marilu says, hi, Hetty Joy. And Janine is watching and says, hi, Hetty. And um, Eileen Cutler says so many details in the in this Adler painting incredible how you captured each of those buildings seems so complicated and impossible to put on a canvas what a gift and Thank Carol you. Hodkin is watching and Paula Lockson is watching and Marilu Bilgre de Rodriguez says wow and Paula says oh this is so beautiful your painting. Thank you. Eileen shares the story and says Ed spotted Kent's photo online and informed Kent about who you were. Kent was so happy to know who that gorgeous painter from all those years ago was. And Hernan is watching and Mary is watching. Hi Mary. Hi. And um, Hernan says Hernan and Christopher send their love and look forward to listening to tonight's broadcast when they get home a little bit later. And John Terracuso says, hugs from California. Hugs back, John. And Sandy says, hi, Aunt Teddy. Love from Sandy and hi, Israel. Sweetie. And we send love back. And Ed Weedman sends you some hearts. <laughs> okay, I'm going to speak now. I'll finish the program with telling you of this wonderful, wonderful learning experience for me. Um, Dr. Joe is a miracle. When he speaks of respect, what it did for me, it changed me because I've stopped treating my life as if I can always do this later. I begun to respect my work. In other words, 
I do my breakfast dishes right after breakfast. And then I sit down at the desk and I go through papers and I finish them. Mm. I never finished things that belonged to me because I had this to do and that to do and that to do. And I realized we don't respect ourselves enough. Now, my relative, Janine, is married to a man who is an amazing historian. And he wrote a book about the area where I was born and grew up in. Not quite that part of Austria, but everything is done with kindness for himself. And I thought, I am so disorganized because I don't respect myself enough. So what I am doing now, I'm trying to be like him. And I am creating drawers where I put specific things. My problem is, I don't use the power of respect enough for me. I think all of you, if you have a chance, should read how he explains things, especially when it comes to people whose minds work in a way like the aphasia people, that we do not do things in the way that society does. And this book has taught me so much about how not only to respect others, but how to respect the things I do. And I would like all of you to realize, together with Cosmic Queries, how amazing you are. Treat yourself that way. And now that the refugees from all over the world are going to be part of your life because that's happened always. I remember I remember being a foreigner in a strange land. It is it comes at you in every minute. But then I realized through his book that when you are born, you face a world you don't understand. And it doesn't respect you because you're a kid and because you're different. Every child is different from the rest of the world. Each of us is unique, which means you don't fit in anywhere. You have to create your own world. Respect it. I cannot tell you everything that's in this book because every word is sacred. But use the word respect to the new world that's going to be living within yours and treat it kindly. And thank you. I love you all. Um, and should I read you? I can read you the last comments. I'd love it. They're from Carol Hodkin. And she says, she answered your question. She said, I've contacted the Ukrainian church in Lindenhurst. They are hoping to send out another shipment of clothing and household medical supplies. I was asked to call back in a week and I will give you an update. And then we will give it to you. Now we're going to be closing part of the time because Kenny won't be here to run it. Kenny, which had the dates? Right, so we were, we we're going to miss next Monday, but we'll be here in two Mondays. So we're going to miss um, the 4th, and we'll be back on the 11th. And I want to read also um, what Carol said. Um, Mom, those dates are, those dates are right. Um, so I want to read what Carol said 
Also, the largest Chabad synagogue is in the Ukraine, and they're accepting financial donations, and I have the information if anyone wants it. Yes, please give it to us, and we will have it for you next, not next Monday, but the Monday after. Right, not on April 4th, but we will see you all on April 11th. I love you all. You are my family. Thank you.